Ladies and gentlemen, 10 years ago I gave a speech here in Hamburg. That speech was called The Dark Side of Scientology. And it can be found on the internet if you are interested. In that speech I said that Scientology could be reduced to three fundamental concepts. Power, purge and punish. Power referred to the goal of Scientology to clear the planet and eliminate all opposition to Scientology. Purge referred to Scientology removing all critical or negative documents and information from government, files and public accessibility. Punish, I said, was the darkest of all sides of Scientology. It took two forms, an internal Orwellian form of eliminating any dissent or critical thought and an external form of punishing critics and uncooperative government officials. With copyrighted policies of terror and psychoterror for the handling of suppressive persons. Persons who impede or impose or oppose Scientology's objectives. These written policies are loosely called fair game, and they can take different forms: intelligence, investigation, intimidation, litigation, fraud, and deception. These six forms of Scientology fair game are the principal means with which the Scientology enterprise uses and exploits the United States system of law for its own ends. The Church of Scientology has a well-deserved reputation for being the most fearsome and intimidating litigant in America. Many lawyers are willing to deal with hardball litigation tactics, but few are willing to confront criminal tactics, public corruption, bribery, blackmail, extortion, perjury, obstruction of justice, fraud, false claims, lying, defamation, deception, intimidation, and psychoterror. All of these things are well documented as being the regular litigation tactics of the Church of Scientology, its lawyers, and its private investigators. The fraud starts with a deceitful claim that it is simply a misunderstood, peaceful, ethical religion. However, only Scientology's conduct and not its science fiction, space opera beliefs is relevant to my opinions being expressed here today. Scientology's well-documented criminal conduct demonstrates that its religiosity is merely a public relations facade and fraud, along with many other false front tentacles, such as WISE, the World Institute of Scientology Enterprises, Narconon, the drug front, Applied Scholastics, the educational front. The, the written policies and records of Scientology demonstrate that it really seeks global, totalitarian, political domination. One Scientology document classifies all governments as suppressive persons to be utterly destroyed and eliminated quietly and without sorrow. In 1960, Scientology issued the Special Zone Plan, the Scientologists' role in life. Scientologists who are not on church staff are ordered to achieve influence in the society at large by taking positions next to the high and mighty. Quote, don't bother to get elected. Get a job on the secretarial staff or the bodyguard, close quote. For example, Scientologist John Danielson was chief of staff to President George W. Bush's former Secretary of Education, Rod Page. They are still working together as the Chartwell Education Group, and they are continuing to support Scientology as applied scholastics in 10 states to receive taxpayer monies as part of the supplemental education service 
under the No Child Left Behind program. Bruce Wiseman, the president of Scientology's anti-psychiatry group, the Citizens, Citizens Commission for Human Rights, or CCHR, is also the treasurer of the National Foundation for Women Legislators. Former Scientology lead attorney, Gerald Shaliff, is now the Los Angeles Police Department attorney and a member of the Los Angeles Police Department command team. The Los Angeles County Sheriff publicly supports and promotes Scientology. It is said he even tried to introduce Scientology training into the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. The Assistant City Attorney in Los Angeles, in charge of ensuring the Los Angeles Police Department does not engage in any racketeering conduct, ironically, is a Scientologist married to OSA legal unit lawyer Ava Paquette, who works with Mr. Moxon. The list of infiltrated, corrupt, compromised officials, including judges, is a long and tawdry one. For example, Scientologists are placed into law firm word processing rooms, into congressional mail rooms, to intercept and report on litigation documents and citizen complaints. These people are coercively indoctrinated into ignoring their oaths and obligations of office, and to always advance Scientology's agenda. To them, as their written policies demand, the ends really do justify the means. As you know here in Europe, no democratic state can survive such pervasive criminal behavior. But the United States now has an institutional tolerance of Scientology's crimes abuses, frauds, and seditions. In the early 1960s, Scientology also established the Department of Government Affairs. Hubbard wrote that the goal of the Department of Government Affairs is to bring hostile government and hostile philosophies into complete compliance with the goals of Scientology. And I'm continuing to quote, this is done by high level control and in its absence by low level ability to overwhelm. Introvert such agencies, control such agencies, close quote. Later Scientology also established a department of official affairs to quote, create heavy influence through our own and similarly minded groups on the public an official mind, close quote. Next came the Scientology Public Investigations section, and in 1966, these Scientology departments were merged into the Guardian's office, the church's very own intelligence agency. It handled public relations, litigation, intelligence gathering, and the like. The Intelligence Bureau not only conducted black ops, but it also engaged in intimidation, and worse, what has been properly classified here in Europe as psychoterror, and even terrorism being perpetrated by a California-based religious corporation calling itself a church, which now numbers about 50,000 or less members worldwide. Falsely inflated membership claims are part of the fraud on the public. In 1982, as part of Scientology's deceptive and fraudulent corporate reorganization, Scientology's Guardian's, uh, Guardian's office was renamed the Office of Special Affairs, or OSA. And contrary to sworn representations to the United States government, many of the Guardian's office staff continued to work for OSA. In 